Uh, and like I said, that whole thing with Jonah Hill and Lauren London uh, having no chemistry. I mean, they even had to they even had to uh, make them have a CG kiss in the mm -hmm. movie. She just melted into his beard. I know. <laughs> like, what kind of Cronenberg shit is this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. I, I really did not like this movie. I say this is the first movie on the list that I hated. Join me for a night of sit-down comedy over at the Broadway Comedy Club, March 15th. That's in New York, of course. We're well into 2024 by a couple of weeks. Some would say that I might be even overdue for our best of, worst of list. But when I say R, I mean me. These guys already did theirs. I was out of town at the time and I did not. But I don't know about my best of list. That's hard for me to do because when I really like movies, I like them for different reasons and I sometimes place them up on the same pedestal. They just have different reasons for being great movies for me. Mm -hmm. But sure. worst of, boy, that's a very clear thing for me, man. I know I don't like your ass. I know I don't like you. I know I don't like you. Ooh, your ass. Yeah, come on up here, man. I mean, I'm going to talk about your ass. Good. Yeah. You get to the front of the line. Yeah, come here. Come, don't, where you going? Come here. I see you. Come here. Yeah, man. And understand, again, it's all a matter of, of, of opinion. It's all a matter of taste. Some of these things might be movies that people enjoy. I definitely don't want to take away from that. But... I do have 10 movies here that I've listed, and I've done this kind of fairly. I just, I just didn't randomly pick these out. You know, I thought about this, and when I say I thought about this, I mean Kevin King thought about it. What he did was <laughs> he went and chose all of the movies that I have up on Rotten Tomatoes, or my scores for on Rotten Tomatoes, and he's listed them from anywhere from, you know, rentals that I've just kind of brushed off to all the way to some old bullshit. And even one in particular got, I think, my only f you this year. Okay. Yes. Because you, you you don't hand out the some old bullshits in the uh, uh, in it, uh, like you used to. No. And, uh, especially not. The f oh, one one got it, <laughs> one got it, and, and and I think it's my first. You know what? That's a good f you right there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. You know, what wasn't, wasn't the worst I've seen as far as the one in that category of rating, but it's 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 there. So, what are my top ten? Worst movies of 2023. And again, nothing against the people that might like these movies. Again, starting from rentals all the way down to the FU. Let's start with number 10. My name is Mills. I was the pilot of the ship. We've crash landed on an uncharted planet. Oh, people. I know some people looking at that like, man, Corey, you love dinosaurs. How could you? <laughs> And I do. I do love dinosaurs. I love Jurassic Park. Jurassic Park, one of the few movies that made me cry. That's right. <laughs> just so, because I was just so happy to see dinosaurs again. And it's, listen, this is what I'm talking about, though. So this is 65. 65, now this was a rental for me, but like I said, on the lower end of a rental. Because, you know, let's talk about dinosaurs. We have them here, as you can see. Dinosaurs mixed with science fiction and time travel. And one of my favorite actors out there. Adam Driver? I mean, man, this should have been, not only should this have been a good movie, this should have been, for me, probably better than sex. Mm -hmm. Agreed. How the hell are you gonna take dinosaurs, time travel, and the wonderful Adam Driver right here and make this shit boring? <laughs> I mean, what they wanted to do was make a, and see, I, I understand what you were kind of aiming for. You just wanted to make a bare bones dinosaur sci-fi thriller. You know, just a man against the elements. I think that's one of the reasons that I wasn't so favorable towards this movie because it was so it was so little happening that, you know, the action that we've seen, seen other dinosaur movies, the, uh, the, the the pacing in this was a little bit slow. And as much as I love Adam Driver, that character was just not interesting. And they put his ass on something that I'm really not favorable for in movies today and in video games, Escort Mission. Oh, you know, yeah. another let's get this little girl to safety. Oh, uh, <laughs> like, I didn't know you had a thing against the ex escort mission. Yeah, the escort missions I'm just kind of tired of. I mean, damn, I got enough of these little kids in Jurassic World already. I don't need a, I, I, we've gone to another planet or another place in time. <laughs> I don't, and we still got kids running from dinosaurs. Yeah. I'm like, damn, I'm tired of this, man. And we've seen it done so well now. Yeah. And that's just really the thing is the movie is just very slow. Admirable that you tried to take that pacing with this because I think that you didn't want to make this such a, 
you don't want to make it a dumb dinosaur spectacle, but maybe that's what you should have been. It is minimalist. It, had the, it has the fault of being minimalist, but also short. So that means you just kind of end up with nothing or barely anything. It really is a, a, a guy, let's grab this girl, get from point A to point B, and showing us these sporadic action scenes that really don't, they're not that, they're not that great. Yeah, I'm sorry, I, mean, I, I meant that it's, uh, it's slow and it's short. Yeah so, yeah. so within that time period, not a whole lot happens. That's what I'm saying. It's just like, <laughs> if only just, I don't know, man. I think with a movie like this, when you only have two characters to deal with, you really have to pick up that pace. Uh -huh. You know, when you're dealing with just with one character, with a, and a, like I said, a character that's not that interesting, and the little girl that he's taking, She's not that interesting either. Man. I hated that character. So you saw this? No, this oh, is on his list. Yeah, oh, this really? Was, this was my number two worst really? movie. This was almost my number one. I was pissed as hell watching this movie. <laughs> I got a point for you. Seriously, I'm not thinking about this. Maybe this should have been high on my list. How the f are you gonna take dinosaurs, time travel, The Last of Us, the, <laughs> and again, like I said, a great actor like Adam Driver, and make that uninteresting? Yeah. How do I, that's almost a feat in itself. Mm -hmm. I mean, I almost admire you for, do, for doing that. Cause I mean. Didn't think you, we could do it, did you? You got to be. You got to have Look at us now. You, yeah, you got to have some talent to up, <laughs> man. Yeah. I mean, you must have went out your way to say, let us dull the shit out of people with this. It's, it, if, if only, you know, I think you're right. If they had done something to make, I don't know what they could have done with Adam Driver. Maybe give him a little more humor. Maybe make him a more of a rugged character in the sense of something like Kurt Russell or something like that. We could, we, 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 you know, we could have followed this guy for one. But Adam Driver, he's not meant for a movie like this because Adam Driver, at least the way they have him written here, he's such a sullen, soft-spoken character and, and little, and he talks very little too. Yeah, if you if you saw this and it wasn't him in it, you go like, okay, just a little generic action movie, you know, maybe even something for the Sci-Fi Channel. And if it wasn't great, you'd be like, yeah, okay. But having him in it. It makes you have, you know, higher expectations. Yeah. You're like, oh, you, if you got Adam Driver, you're going to do something that uses his acting talent. And nah, they, re they really don't. Could have been anybody in that role. To, uh, as much as I've complained about some of the parts of Jurassic World, just take all the chases from Jurassic World and you see them right here and they're just not done as well. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, it's just, it, uh, yeah, I don't, they're not done, they're not as much fun. They're not done with the same kind of B-movie spirit. You have a B-movie right here and okay. you need to take a B-movie approach with it. You know, I ain't saying it got to be stupid and goofy, but, you know, a little bit. <laughs> but yeah, just bump up the fun a little bit, taking itself way too serious. So, yeah, there you go, people. That's my number 10. Didn't hate it, but it definitely was a movie that I was extremely disappointed in. Here's a here's a movie that might have some people a little upset when I mention it. OK, number nine is Fast X. How dare you? <laughs> how, how dare they how dare they uh, I've, I, I've hung with this for a long time I've been understanding I've been patient I've understood what people find appealing about this but now god damn it it's just getting too stupid for me they have jumped the shark they had that yeah. man that's <laughs> I'm, t I'm, t I'm, t I'm at the point now I'm tired I'm tired of it now because they listen this is where they they really at this point they stopped Caring. Yeah, I mean, yeah. no, listen, I know they care because they're putting all this effects and stuff into it, but they don't care about the story anymore. The, and it's insulting. The moment you got them, I mean, there's no stakes anymore. No. There's no, there, there's nothing that I have to fear with these characters anymore. The moment that Dom can drive down a wall, not up, down. A wall, and plus, wait, 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 look, we don't stop there. He's, he's, he's driving from fire. <laughs> right. I mean, when you it gets to a point where you ignore gravity to the to to the extent that, you know what, you make you try you treat me like I'm stupid now. I don't like that. <laughs> yeah, it's become Hot Wheels. Yeah, it's. I mean, and I probably wouldn't mind that as much. It's a difference when doing something because I'm not against doing dumb, crazy, uh, you know, and, and totally insane things that you can only see in a movie. I probably would like that if it felt inspired. If it felt like, again, if, we felt, if this felt like a B movie where they were doing ridiculous things like that because, you know, they 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 were just they really were just 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 pushing the limits. I would be like, all right, that's cool, but they're doing it now because they kind of run out of ideas. Yeah, but I, also I think a factor is that when you look at Dom or Vin Diesel, he just looks old and tired. He <laughs> he's he doesn't have the fire that he used to. 
I would say that John Cena probably had like, as far as the sprinklings of ideas in here, John Cena probably had my favorite moments in this movie. Like the uh, the Rainbow Six Siege scene where like the SWAT team's coming in and yeah, yeah, yeah. they're busting yeah. people through the floor. I was like, okay, this no, this is doing something. There's some new people in here. John Cena, I do like. I, li I really enjoyed him in here. And I know, he, the, spoiler alert, he's supposed to be dead. He ain't dead. Man, his dead. cannon car. I mean, that look, was... he already had a personality transplant from the last movie. <laughs> yeah. So, of course, he ain't dead here. Yeah, they got they, they, And they're just making light of things like, you know, they... They got kids killing people, and they just, <laughs> just having a good time with it. You know, they, no no repercussions, uh, guilt about anything. I will say this: the, the, this this was a rental for me also, and uh, Jason Momoa. It was so much fun watching him. Yeah, mm -hmm. he's having such a good time with this. At number eight, again, this I, I, there would have been a time I would have said that this would be surprising to people, and people probably would come at me a lot harder than what I think they are going to do now. Uh, there would have been a time I would have thought that wouldn't have been the case, or would have been the case rather that people would have challenged me more on this. But uh, my number eight movie is... I'm the man who can give you the one thing you want. What's that? Time. Yeah, wish you could get that too. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's on a lot of people's lists. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, okay, see, that's what I'm saying. I think at a time, this is Ant-Man the Wasp, Quantumania. There was a time if you put anything Marvel on your list, people would have been like, what? Are you crazy? But now, especially with this one, because I think a lot of people put this one on, on their list because this is one of the first signs that Marvel was cracking. Mm. You know, it's kind of falling apart. You know, you mean to tell me you took your biggest threat, your new biggest villain, and put him in a goofy ass cartoon and he got defeated at the end yeah. easily. Yeah. It's like, I, I you know, this is a... Uh, this was the first, I mean, for a lot of people, we had seen it coming. You know, we had started to already say Marvel's joking too much. Marvel's starting to look the same. Uh, so many special effects are not what they used to be, but Quantumania is the first one where I think we all kind of had to sit back and say, yeah. Yeah, let's, we finally have to face the truth and just say that Marvel's not what it used to be. And this is not, a, you know, it's not a dig on Marvel per se. It's just that there were so many things wrong with this movie. The effects were terrible. Uh, your, your boy, uh, Modoc looked horrible. Yeah. That was yeah, yeah, they did, did not know what to do with Modoc and just making him jokey like that. It's like that did nothing for anybody. Everything has to be a joke. Bill Murray was in here. I mean, he got that dude got ate by a giant Pokemon. You know? Yeah, they they go to the Star Wars cantina. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, there were so many moments here where we should have been building up our biggest villain right here, and we did it for antics. You know, we traded that off for antics right here. And like I said, you know, things not only were looking the same, but they looked subpar. You know, it's one of the things I was kind of worried about when I saw the trailer. But hey, no, it's Marvel, man. We're going to be all right. Uh, again, you know, the, the humor start to all feel the same. Even for an Ant-Man movie. Ant this is where Ant-Man humor start to spread to other Marvel movies. I'll go back to having, uh, uh, talking about uh, uh, before all the stuff happened with Jonathan Majors. You know, Jonathan Majors is so great in this movie. And they did him a great disservice by having him be in this film right mm -hmm. here. You know, I, I think... I'm not saying it should have been such a dark movie or a darker film. It's just, I don't know, man. Most of this movie was just so full of just uh, uh, humor that often didn't work that it almost like we made our biggest threat here, you know, a uh, secondhand character. Once they got to the quantum realm, this movie was going in so many different directions. You have uh, Michelle Pfeiffer and even her scenes with Jonathan Majors, which were kind of... Uh, more dramatic. And then you had the other scenes where they go into the quantum realm and they meet these comical characters. You know, they look, look like the comic book version of, or the, the comical version of Star Wars in a way. Yeah. yeah. Oh, definitely. It, this also had the problem of too many characters. Oh, like we, yeah. we built them up over time, but as much as I, I always want to see more of Michael Douglas as the original Ant-Man and hey, the Wasp. Yeah. This whole time, they had nothing to do. Just, they had nothing to do but be there and just maybe make some asides every so often. And I was like, this would have been much better if we just had Janet and and Scott and and um and Kang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree, man. My biggest complaint was that his daughter they didn't give her the obvious name. I mean, I know it's been in the comic book, but mm. watching, I was like, look at his daughter, Ladybug. Yeah. No, no, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, man. I agree with you on uh, on uh, uh, Michael Douglas and Michelle Pfeiffer, man. They, they 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 they're they're so good and they're just wasted here. A lot, I think a lot of things were wasted. My biggest problem, I'll move on from this. I really just have a problem with the humor here, man. 
And I know See, I Ant- it worked for me. Well, it's an Ant Man movie, and it's supposed to be humor, but they try to bring in so much more weighty stuff that I don't, don't think should be an Ant Man movie should not be for the, for what they tried to do here. Kang should not have been in an Ant Man movie. I get why it makes sense to do it, uh, and I felt I, I felt stronger about my opinion of this after watching Loki, mm, where the, yeah. the multiverse stuff was handled much better. Yeah, this is one at number seven for my worst movies of 2023. This is one I knew was gonna be bad. If this is one, I was like, why'd y'all even make this? <laughs> this this idea looked like it wasn't gonna work from the very beginning. This could be a lot worse. How could this get worse? Ah! Hold on, buddy! Ah! Holy Ah, uh, people, that's strays. <laughs> and the reason why I looked at this at first when I saw this trailer and I, I, I said, I don't know how this idea is gonna work because it looked like a childish ass idea. Dogs and cat, uh, are, are dogs cussing and doing nasty things. And that's exactly what it was, except that they never took it beyond just a gimmick. You know what I'm saying? Truth in advertising. It sure was. <laughs> it was way too truthful with that. Yeah, it was. It was. Uh, if y'all remember this, it, it bombed bad at the box office. But that was the only thing it had going for it. Is that? Oh, that's the gimmick. These dogs say nasty things. They make a lot of sex jokes. Uh, even though the whole thing looks like a cute children's film. And that's all it wrote on. Yeah, I, I, I think this movie's not very good. But I didn't hate it because Jamie Foxx made me laugh throughout. No, he did. And, and his char- we talked about it a little bit. His character has like one really nice moment. I liked his explanation. That's what was worse for me. It showed where it had potential. There are a few moments where the movie actually has heart. <laughs> yeah. But they spend so much time telling these lame jokes. And the reason why I just lame jokes is because the joke is the dog said, that's it. <laughs> and he wants to bite the pee-pee. Oh, yeah. Uh, there's, you know, they're talking about dicks or they're humping things. And it's like, man, we see these. Not only are these... You know, is this not funny? But we've seen these done already in non-raunchy movies, though. Yeah. You know, dogs humping, dogs peeing. You know, d- dogs cracking some of the same jokes we see here. It's done. It's all been done before, man. Oh, we made it nasty and raunchy. You know, so what? You know, <laughs> you don't make it any better. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah. But there are moments where, like, uh, especially near the, man, when they got to the end, I was like, oh, not, not. Oh, now y'all want to. Be a movie. <laughs> no. 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 Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, Jamie Foxx's character at one point, like they explain why he's a stray dog. It's like, there's something there. Oh, okay, never mind. Yeah. I guess we're, we're moving on to the <laughs> couch again. Yeah, it actually had some heart. <laughs> Fucking yeah, we did, it did that, right? We did like, all right, we want to go out of like this. Okay. But yeah, you know, it's, it's a low rental for me, uh, but still on my worst of list. Uh, We'll start getting into some of the bullshit in a little bit. Really, <laughs> I'm waiting for the bullshit. Yeah, we get into the bullshit a little bit. Uh, not just yet, though, as we get to the number six worst movie of 2023 on my list. But I don't even remember being sick. <sighs> People, that's Insidious. Oh. The Red Door. And the reason why this is on my list is because... Uh, they just they just did the same thing that all these other movies did, but not as good because they just run out of ideas. They, they just made this movie because all the others made money. You don't have a good history with these insidious movies. And now people understand it. <laughs> now we got oh, we got to get to the damn red door. If y'all understand what I'm talking about. Because I've been telling y'all about this shit for a long time now. And now y'all want to start talking about it. Man, ain't nothing going on here. I told y'all that years ago. Now y'all walked that no, now y'all see what I'm talking about. Yeah, it's just, man, as Corey, far as- why didn't you tell us? I did, yeah. I get it. Man, I even have respect for Insidious. I don't like it, but I, I respect it and understand why people like it. But I mean, God damn, they just been doing the same movie. Mm-hmm. Well, I forgot which one we're on with this one, but we've been doing the same movie, except now, like I said, they're running out of ideas and they're just repeating the same thing they've done before. They're just watering down the other, the other movies as we go along. From what I remember with, the, oh, that's another thing. These effects, I mean, look, y'all got, y'all got to admit. I mean, these, 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 I mean. It was cheap. Come, come, come on, y'all, meet, meet me halfway. Come on, now y'all seen this, all this spook house shit they doing here. Y'all saw it. They just put a damn, they put a red light up on the wall and then they have these people dressed up in ghost paint calling out from behind, from under the bed and everything. Y'all, come on, y'all, y'all. Spook house. This is, this is one of them, uh, you know, uh, Jason Blum is spending a lot more money these days, but not on this. Look at this. It's cheaper. Look at this. Look at this shit, y'all. Y'all, you know, y'all know. <laughs> look, at, look, look at the damn haunted Halloween haunted house shit right here. These movies have always been cheap, and I've tried to respect them for being cheap and making money and scaring people, but 
Man, y'all got to give me, you got to give it up on this one right here. Yeah, it's cheap because they took out the light bulbs and sold them. Yeah. <laughs> I remember talking about this. I said, you know, episodes of Goosebumps look better than this right here, man. Hey, some Goosebumps it's episodes just, are scary. Yeah, it's just, it's just, I'm not, yeah, well, this is not. And I mean, I forgot what the deal was with the red door, but it did, you know, we went through a long, we went through a long setup for for nothing with this door near the end of the movie. Mm. Yeah, so I, I'm sorry, y'all. This is the one where I, I can't respect y'all on this one. This is one we all got to sit back and say, this is some bullshit now. Even though I was nice enough to say that there were some character moments in here because I really like, uh, somebody has been holding this down for me, is uh, uh, Patrick Wilson. Yeah. I like Patrick Wilson in this. Patrick Wilson, his son has grown up to be some of a brat. He's trying his best to get along with that boy. <laughs> I, feel, I guess because I feel sorry for him. I gave this, I gave this a low riddle. Uh, some good, you know, and, and I would say also, I think that this is very much a seasonal movie. It's got somewhat of a cheap spook house look, but it's perfect for Halloween, you know, if you're watching it at home. Either up your goddamn game or stop. All right, because I'm tired of this shit. I remember when you saw the first one, the word you repeated over and over was spook house. And yeah, it's still spook house. <laughs> it ain't got no spooky either. It's got, actually got more cheap. Nah, they didn't, they didn't have a uh, Darth Maul show up. Show up I this? really don't get these movies, man. I mean, listen, I guess it's just something that just doesn't appeal to me because I see the fog machine back there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I see these people dressed up in these old cheap ass Halloween costumes and these ghost sheets and whatnot. Hey, I don't know how y'all fall over that shit, to be honest. I really don't. But somehow you do. But I think y'all are wising up with this one right here. Y'all know. And maybe you don't because I still think the movie made money its first weekend. But it's you know it's got a it's got a name now. Yeah, sure. So you know what I'm gonna talk. Hard franchise. Yeah. What's, what you gonna do? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> not, except not go see it. <laughs> except sit back and shut my goddamn mouth. Ain't nobody listening to me. I'm just uh, not, old man. Yeah, you I'm just, just don't that, understand. I'm that guy, man. <laughs> I'm not the. I'm just never. I've never been the one for these movies. So you, we in cities that 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 damn the Darth Maul dude. Now we never got along. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's just him and I. Doesn't That's, he have like a bird beak or some shit like that too? <laughs> it looks weird. Uh, yeah. It's the highest grossing, I think, Corey. It might be. Yeah, it might be yeah. the highest grossing out of all of them. Yeah, and it costs nothing to make. Yeah. Smart, you know, smart business, I have to say. I can't really go in and hate on it that much. It really, really is smart business with this movie. Like I said, it's just, listen, what... What's going on with the city is, as far as me and I like it, that's between them and me, okay? They ain't got nothing to do with nobody else. <laughs> All right, so if you like it, no hate on you, man. And much respect to us still for making high, you know, a lot of money and high gross in business at the box office. That's smart, okay? So cool, whatever. You, know, you go to damn Goodwill and buy a bunch of sets and make a million dollars. That's so easy, why don't you do it? Yeah, because I got integrity, goddamn. Fuck <laughs> <That's laughs> that, let's do it. Oh, is, that, is that right? <laughs> and I ain't got the business parts for it either. I just thought of the. Yeah, God bless Jason Blum. All right. And that ghost got me wanting to take some therapy right now. There Better go. help, yeah. <laughs> Watch the video <laughs> No, I said, there you go. Oh, there you go. I thought you were like, me, 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 me. <laughs> That would be childish. There's people who really need help. No, like, they need better help. <laughs> Listen to me. I need some help right now. Oh, uh, folks, this portion of the show in my list is brought to you by BetterHelp. You know, a lot of people think it's therapy as something that you need. Look, he's going to get it right now. Look at it. <laughs> uh, you know, people think therapy is something that you need for very, very serious things. And all of it is serious when it comes to your your mental health. But, you know, people think about, oh, man, you got you to be suicidal and you got to be crazy and all that to go and get therapy. I'm fine. No, you're not. No, you're not. Everybody's stressing like, like what am I putting that there for? <laughs> everybody's stressing like everybody else. Everybody's under pressure like everybody else. You know, we all got moments where, you know, we, we, we got a lot on our minds. And, hey, we're entering the new year right now. Talking about pressure. A lot of people got pressure on there. Oh, man, I got to. I got I got I got my resolution that I got to live up to. I got all my goals I got to live up to. I don't know, man. I, it's a lot, a lot of work, a lot of hard stuff going on. Yeah, some people losing sleep going into the new year thinking about that stuff. Well, if you're that kind of person, or you just need to organize your mind. Hey, those goals you want to reach, you reach them a lot quicker and a lot faster and a lot better if you have your mind organized. And that's where therapy can help. And what better place to start than BetterHelp? You know, with BetterHelp, the reason why 
online therapy and online therapy with BetterHelp is so good is because, for one, it's convenient. It's on your time. You get it when you want, how you want it. You know, some people love to talk to people face to face. That's where a video call comes in. Some people, I don't know, that makes me nervous, man. I don't want to look at it in my eye or anything. You know what? You can do a video chat or you can do a phone call if you like. It all depends on how you want to do it. And you know what? Let's just say the person that you're talking to, oh, man, it's just not working out, this therapist that they gave to me. You know what you do? You go in, you let them know, and they'll reassign a different therapist to you. No charge. It's very easy to do. No questions asked. Also, it's affordable. And since it's so convenient, you know, you don't have to drive anywhere to do anything. Like if you're one of those people who thought you'd never go to therapy because I don't know of all the stigma that's against it. And, uh, you know, you thought it was inconvenient. Well, now this is your time to try it. All you got to do is go over here and sign up for it. And it's also that I mentioned was affordable. It's about to get more affordable right now because, listen, if you go over here and put in betterhelp.com slash double toasted. You will get 10 percent off your first month. I think some of these movies going to need better help after I'm talking about this. <laughs> Oh, uh, folks, maybe I need it after watching a lot of these movies. Hey, go ahead and try it out. And again, I want to thank BetterHelp.com for sponsoring this portion of the show. And I want to thank all of you out there for your support. Our number five worst movie of 2023. It's the biggest Meg I've ever seen. Biggest Meg anyone's ever seen. That's the apex predator. What happened last time? Okay, so you see that right there. Now, I'm all for this, people. This is the Meg 2, yeah, the you trench. Love, you love shit like that. I do, especially when you have, you know, listen, Jason Statham kicking off with John Shark with his foot. I mean, <laughs> you know, I love stuff like this, man. But a lot of this movie is exposition, setup, talking. By the time you get to that trench, which is kind of like watching Aliens or something like that, you know, which is a fun scene. Okay, that's cool. But it takes so long to get to that. It's such a small part of the movie. And then once we get past that, we start getting to the, you know, the, the third act. It's just a repeat of the movie that we saw before. Oh, boy. They just threw in some giant lizards and that's it. But I mean, right down to even having a dog <laughs> that's, yeah. that, that, that uh, for comedy relief that's swimming away from these things. Yeah, it feels so much like the last movie, man, except not as good. Only, the only they Listen, the best thing about this new one is that I, did, I wasn't watching it soaking in piss. <laughs> I had more fun soaking in piss water watching the first one than I did this one right here. Yeah. And I don't think this is, again, this is uh, definitely not, the as you can see, the worst movie that I've seen. It's at number five on my list. Uh, I think, again, this is a low matinee. But, uh, oh, matinee. That's I mean, I'm sorry, low, low rental, low rental. Well, I'm getting myself mixed up. It's a low rental. Now let's get into some old bullshit. Here we go. Here we go. What's our first some old bullshit at number four? on my list of worst movies of 2023. She knows her way around it and that's that and I respect it. And then what I'm saying is I love your daughter and I would make a good husband. Ain't this about a bitch. Yeah, you got them right about that people. This is you people. The movie where I dislike the black people more than anything in the movie. <laughs> it, it, it was on my list. Was it on your list? Yeah, yeah we discussed this one. None of these characters are likable. You either got uh, uh, Jonah Hill in here babbling his ass off and I don't get why the uh, uh, Eddie Murphy's daughter in this movie uh, who's played by what's her name Lauren London I don't get why she is and there's no chemistry between those two at all I don't give you don't ever understand why she's into him but really what bothered me were people I should, I should be liking the movie uh, Eddie Murphy and who is that? Nia Long. Nina Long. I, I, man, as much as I love Eddie Murphy, he annoyed the hell out of me, this movie. He's just not a likable person at all. And uh, it's funny because there's even a moment where the blacks come off as anti-Semitic. Yep. <laughs> it's just like, this is- this, this Unapologetically. Is, yeah. I said, this is not Damn. this is not rubbing me the right way at all, man. I said, I don't lie. I'm just, I hate these characters, all of them in this movie, but mostly them. All these characters are either idiots or mostly abrasive. Uh, and like I said, that whole thing with Jonah Hill and Lauren London uh, having no chemistry. I mean, they even had to, they even had to uh, make them have a CG kiss in the movie. Mm -hmm. 
she just melted into his he, beard. I know. <laughs> you know like, what kind of Cronenberg shit is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. I, I really did not like this movie. I say this is the first movie on the list that I hated. Yeah, it, this uh, what you talk about with the the two of them and that couple. It's something I've been noticing in a lot of movies lately. Is that they don't the character like a setup? There's a setup, and they don't make a compelling argument for it. There's not a compelling argument as to why these two people are in love with each other. The moment they met each other, he's talking so much dumb shit, and I do not understand what what she found appealing about him mm -hmm. at all. It's just it's an annoying film, man. I did not like this at all. All these characters bothered me. I, I couldn't wait for it to finish. And also, like I said, man, uh, I mentioned this in the in the review. Uh, they just. <laughs> They do, they do things uh, on a technical side, a filmmaking side that just did not appeal to me. That would, those, oh, those, those transitions, transitions. <laughs> oh, all the oh, oh, montages and transition <laughs> and fades <laughs> in. I'm like, what, is, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> He's like, you ever made a film before? <laughs> yeah. yeah, Netflix has some weird editors. People who do their trailer and edit their movies. Yeah. Something's off. Yeah, it was, yeah, that, I, that, I, it felt like a TV show. It did. Not a Ooh. movie. I was like, hey, everything, even the editor is making me mad in this movie, man. <laughs> Tired of this. Uh, I didn't even bother with this one. Yeah, no, you didn't need to, man. That's, I, I, you, you could always hate watch it. <laughs> I got other things I'd rather yeah. hate watch. Yes. At number three, again, we're in some old bullshit territory now. Up At to our knees. Uh, number three. Yeah, the top three now. My number three worst movie of 2023 is. In the 80s, kids went missing. The police searched Freddy's. They became animatronics all right <laughs> listen I, I i defend this for the fans because as i said there's definitely something that you see there that you know the, uh, you're hardcore about it you see something this and other people don't so that's fine you know i, I defend it for you. You, you, you there was something there that made this movie one of the most successful movies of 2023 i'm not mad about that but you if you had if you were to ask me my honest opinion the horror in this movie, just the story itself, but the horror is so bad. I mean, it would really, y'all call this a horror movie? It would only scare a seven-year-old. Mm -hmm. And this, okay, if you want to call it a, like, as we always say, gateway horror for kids who are like seven, eight years old, fine, that's good. But this movie's poorly structured, man. They got awkward comedy in here. The animatronics, I mean, I I can see it in a certain, in a certain light in a better movie where they could be scary, but here they just, they just look. They just look silly, dude. They're there's, Barney. Yeah, there's even a point where they're cute. I mean, in the movie, they actually play them up in the not at the end, in the middle of the movie. They have a slumber party. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what the f is going on here? They're building forts. Building <laughs> forts and everything. I mean, Give they them thumbs up. These things should have been just in my opinion. They should have been mysterious and creepy and in the shadows the whole time. Not eating pizza and jamming out to songs <laughs> and hanging out with you know a little girl and partying with her in the middle of the movie. Uh, it, you know, it looks cheap, but that's to be a given right here. It's one of the reasons why the movies was this movie was so successful. But there's a way to make things look cheap and have that be to your benefit. Uh, not here. It actually made it, again. It, you know, it looks like a children's film. Yeah, I found it frustrating because, like, when we talked about it, it was on both of our lists of worst of 2023. It's it's annoying because they got Henson on this, you know, and the animatronics like they look accurate to the game, but they don't they don't use them efficiently. No, no, I don't I don't think so either. The reveal where the you know we kids of the animatronics they were the 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 you know the animatronics inhabit the are the spirits inhabit the animatronics that then that was silly and that was <laughs> like what how yeah <laughs> who cares and the ending boy I'm not okay I'm not gonna I should for those of you who haven't seen it, I ain't gonna spoil it but that ending just stupid all right what they do with the your boy Shaggy, Matthew Lillard. <laughs> That's what I gave up. I was riding with a low, low rental on this. But when they got to that finale, I said, no, nah, off with that. Uh, yeah, I saw that coming, though, the whole time. But Matthew Lillard is in the movie. Turns out he was the guy killing the kids and he stuffed the bodies into animatronics or something. And, and there's, that's why their spirits inhabit it. And so at the end of the movie, he decides to, his, to protect his secret by killing uh, Josh, Josh Hutchison by dressing up like a giant rabbit. <laughs> I mean, as one does. That's, 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 the most, that's the most logical course of action. He comes out that giant rabbit like, yeah, come at me, man. <laughs> so I, was like, I was like, nah, man. We, he went around killing people in a giant rabbit costume. Ain't nobody, nobody saw that shit. <laughs> Old habits die hard. <laughs> uh, 
Old spring trap. Yeah. Well, yeah. he was the one that gave him the job, by the way, for more yeah. than for the. Uh, he's like, we need to sacrifice somebody every night for this shit. So your ass is next. But now that you yeah. found my secret, I got to dress up like a giant Easter bun in. <laughs> to kill your ass. It was stupid, man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, well, so far, this is the one movie that's ended up on all our lists. Yeah. I, I, again, no offense to those who like it and respect to the movie for appealing to his fan base and making his money but i just cannot endorse this movie as a good movie this is it's, the story is ridiculous here and the execution is pretty terrible if you ask me but uh, i hope well, you're ready for more i don't know maybe we'll get a better one then i don't know mm. nah, man, man, what am I talking about? <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna keep going down this road and that's what's gonna make it yeah. bad is it's gonna get deeper and deeper into this weird shit yeah, I don't tell you, boy. I don't know. Yeah, hey, listen, it's not for me. We'll leave it at that. Hey, Lisa, is something else that beat this movie. Yeah, what beat that? I, I mean, I could think of one thing, but. What do you think it is? For number two? Yeah. Ooh, I think either one or two is Expendables four or five. Which one? It was four. Four. Well, my number two worst movie of 2023. Oh, yes. That was me walking out the movie. <laughs> help! Help! Oh. Help! The body is the blood! The body is the That's kind of creepy right there, but deceptive because what you're seeing right there, and this has been a common theme of what we said about a lot of things tonight as a criticism, not doing anything that something else hasn't done 10 times better. This is my number two movie is The Exorcist Believer. Uh, first of all, for trying to follow up a masterpiece. <laughs> trying to dis dismiss all these other sequels talking about, no, nah, nah, get, get out the way. We the real one right here. I like Exorcist 2 better than this right here. <laughs> right, right. That was a lot more interesting. This, you know, because Exorcist 2 was trying, and that, the Exorcist 2 is notorious. It's a notorious sequel for being uh, a terrible follow-up to a masterpiece. But after looking at this movie right here, at least the Exorcist 2 was trying something different. You know, this right here, man, the writing is so bad that not only is this not doing anything that we haven't seen done better, but man, they have all these characters. This is terrible writing to me. All these characters, which are in any other movie, they'd be not even supporting characters. They'd just be side characters. Mm -hmm. Their asses all showed up at the end of the movie like they are, like they were the main characters in the film. I was right. like, well, I don't know you. I didn't learn anything about you. I don't know what's happening. The movie moves excruciatingly slow, and it's not helped by seeing a lot of these possession tropes that we've seen over and over again. Yeah. Um, you know, I, uh, I, and also the way they just try so hard to connect it to the original, you know, right. bringing in, God. what's the name Ellen here? Burstyn. Yeah, it's like, ah, oh, this is just disrespectful, man. This yeah, that's what it felt like, disrespectful. It's like, all right, you went through all the trouble and money to get her here and then do nothing with it, just to <laughs> trade on her name. That's bullshit. I, I admired David Gordon Green for not coming in and trying to do, uh, you know, a schlocky horror film. I, I do think he tried to pay some respect to the original, even though he put in a couple of cheap the jump scares and whatnot in here. But uh, but it's something that worked for Halloween, the first one. He tried to take that approach here. And, it, and for some reason, it did not work. And that brings us to the number one worst movie of 2023 for me. And this is, this trumps everything else because this is the f right here. That's Expendables 4, y'all. Now, I'm giving this a f you because for the for their own good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing this for you. I'm doing this for you because you need to know. So they take a franchise known for taking legendary action stars and then remove the action stars and replace them with people that nobody gives a shit about. And I'm, that's no disrespect to those people out there, but Megan Fox ain't no action star, okay? <laughs> you know, they got some other people in there. And meanwhile, you tease people with Jason Statham and Sylvester Stallone. Jason Statham, he's in here for a lot, but Sylvester Stallone, he came at the beginning, said, you go ahead and take it, Jason, and sat back and got himself a drink and didn't come back no more, man, <laughs> until a dumbass part near the end of the movie. Mm. And get that, I'd have to go, I'd have to spend, you know, watch the review. Or if I, I'd have to spend like a long spoiler discussion telling you how bad this is with some of the reveals that they have here, some of the things with the uh, how long they spend in certain locations. But, you know, just it's, it's just a ridiculous plot right here. And again, characters that nobody cares about. But one of the things that really got me is that the Expendables, while they're going after people who are bad guys, 
man, they do some shit in here where it's like, you know, y'all ain't so good either. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're not, I mean, I'm not even talking about in a, in a good way. You know, you could call them anti-heroes or whatever. At the end, you just realize, oh, y'all are crazy, man. <laughs> and it's not, and again, not in a good way. They end up being, there's a scene that Stallone is in, man, where he kills somebody that, that is innocent, for all we know. I said, what the f*** do that for? <laughs> that's a, that's a guy that pissed him off, man. He brutally, like, killed this guy, man. He did, I mean, I'm gonna say brutally, like, he... Like he went through it, like he 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 plotted this death of this dude. I was mm-hmm. like, you're you're a psychopath, man. <laughs> I mean, spoiler, they all are. They no, they all are. They all are. But I was like, God damn, you didn't have to go that far. <laughs> yeah, it's just it was a really really misguided uh, approach with this franchise that built itself on one uh, uh, notable thing that really appealed to the fans out there, and then just totally betraying that. I'm a never a big fan of this series, to be honest with you, but I know what really made it work. And for what y'all did with this, pulling all these people up that no one, no one came to see. Look, it was the whole thing of like, we're gonna get these action stars together, legends, you know, and then they're gonna go against a villain who's also played by another action legend. That's gone right here. That formula's done. So I was like, why y'all even trying? I mean, all those legends are just too old to still do exactly. that. Exactly, exactly. So, you know, either find another approach to this, or just give it up, man. I'm gonna bring up a movie that I have respect for in a lot of ways, but it kind of, it kind of got on my nerves. It's a movie I saw on a plane, and I, again, so much. It's it's one of these movies that is so much, so many good things in it, but especially production wise, a lot of ambition behind it. But for some reason, this movie it was, just, it was just being weird, just to be weird. Yeah, and I, and I didn't, and it just. After a while, it was so long, and I was like, "All right, oh, I know what it is." All right, let me yeah. see if y'all think if you know. I know if this is what you think it is. Junior stargazers and space cadets. Oh, very awfully, maybe my favorite character ever. I don't know why nobody else liked it. Oh, so it's Wes Anderson's Asteroid City. What were you thinking? Uh, uh, Bo is afraid. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Too. Uh, but we talked about this movie. This was one of my dishonorable mentions. It almost made my worst of the, really? of the year. This movie annoyed the hell out of me, dude. I yeah I. I admire the production on this. It's one of the best looking movies I've seen this year. Oh, it's beautiful. Yo, it's, it's a gorgeous looking film, man. But all these characters are so much the same in their weirdness. And the story really doesn't go anywhere because it's so odd. You know, it's, this is this is Wes Anderson unleashed, man. And I just... <laughs> this is, I mean, like so many of his movies, especially as they, we keep progressing, they, you know, people say they climb up their own ass. It's just yeah. like, it's like it's him imploding on himself. And... I can say that I came out of this with somebody who's a big Wes Anderson fan and loved it. And and his comment was, I just love the way that he didn't give a shit about his audience and just did what he wanted to do. And I was like, well, I am that audience. So if he doesn't give a shit about me, there's no reason for me to like this. Yeah. No, I hear you, man. Yeah. I, I Tons can't. of red herrings. It just yeah. it wastes your time. Yeah. Yeah. At the end, you're like, what was this about? It was about processing grief. Like, no, no, there's yeah, a, a simpler way to do that. Too. Yeah. Like Bo is afraid. I, there's a lot of complaint about Bo is afraid, but I, I, there's a, I, I understood kind of what the movie was doing. And there's a lot yeah. of things I admired about mm-hmm. it more than I did this right here. True. And there were different things happening throughout Bo is afraid. Yeah. There, everything's almost monotone in how all uh-huh. these characters are the same. You know, a lot of people, they're going to love Wes Anderson based on Wes Anderson's reputation. And his status as a you know a director and an artist and a visionary artist at that, which he is. But this is the one I was like, as you say, he was up in his own ass with this. Yeah, everybody's monotone. Yeah. So even if you you laughed at somebody being monotone, it's like, well, how long can you laugh at the same thing? Yeah. For for you know uh, two hours. But I did I did love the look of the movie. It kept my sure. attention. Oh yeah. That's why it's not, make, yeah. That's what draws you to it. Yeah. So that's why I didn't make my worst of list. But I just I just I just thought it was something where it's like I've never been in such direct conflict with the film in a while where I really. I should like everything that's going on here because I really love the look of it. It kept my attention, but it got on my nerves at the same time. But I couldn't turn away. Well, so. it's packed with actors you like. Yeah. You know to be good actors. You're watching great actors be uh, flat actors. Yeah, yeah. And it's like the movie challenges you into like disliking it because it just keeps going on and trying to be weird and like, you know, trying to have like a point of view outside of the movie. Yeah. And then it keeps pulling that back. It's like, all right, you're not even saying anything anymore. <laughs> yeah, I kind of feel the same.